Hello everyone, i80386SX, you're staring at a Windows XP machine, it is my IBM ThinkPad T41, which I quietly pointed out in the lower right hand corner, and what are we doing with this today? Well, I just got this Rosewheel modem in the mail, got it for 10 bucks, I bought it with the hopes of... Uh, putting more modern systems on dial-up systems as needed for bar bets or whatever I can think to do. It may make a slight detour somewhere in the country depending on what happens with this. And I also noticed that absolutely nobody reviewed this thing whatsoever on YouTube. Usually everybody reviews everything these days. So, without any further delay, Let's plug this thing in and let's see what we get. And let's see what it says. And to be expected, we're going to have to go get some drivers for this thing. That might be... That might pose to be a challenge. Now let's get everything plugged in here. Not that that would help us. So hopefully this will go up smoother rather than worse with a little video editing. I am going to go be on the lookout for some drivers and hopefully yield some good results. All right, we are back in business. I did find a driver from Rosewell. And it's supposed to have a flash drive pop up here, but it says it's not formatted. Okay, so that's weird. Let's see what's wrong with our flash drive real quick. And it's FAT32, so I'm real interested in... We'll try another flash drive. Maybe that one. There's an irregularity with it, perhaps. So let's try my luck at my 10 pack of flash drives here, and hopefully our results will be a little bit nicer. There's also a FAT32 drive, so that should read just fine on Windows XP. You can always burn a CD, I suppose, too, if it really gets to be difficult, but I'd rather not waste a CD. What in the world is going on here? This thing is just not having it. Well, let's... I'm gonna... Let's try to restart this machine, maybe. I remember XP in the, my tech school days being at times difficult with flash drives. I'm hoping that this is one of those cases. And as you can see, we are connected to the OBTalk device. And while that's booting, I hopefully solved my uh, problem with the tripod. I bought one of these stone bags and in the most IT fashion possible, instead of using stones, we use hard drives, and so far, so good. Actually, I don't think we need it that far back out at this point, so I'll put it back where we can see the vast majority of the screen.
So we can get rid of the glare. I don't know if that if I can. I like that it's taking forever even though there's no networks connected to it right now. The Wi-Fi card is disabled. Oh, finally. And, all right, so it says it found a USB modem. Let's see if it will find our flash drive this time. Da. So far, no. Nope, oh, there it is. And it does not want anything to do with these flash drives whatsoever, so I am... Let's see if we play the old switcheroo here. There's the removable disc. Okay, I'm actually getting kind of ticked off with this. Alright, yes, I have found a FAT16 or FAT formatted SD card. This thing. Well, I don't know, folks. I don't exactly like where this is going. Cancel that. Maybe that's holding it up. We may have more problems with what is being let on by this computer. If that doesn't detect it, I'm going to potentially prepare for Plan C as soon as I can find the adapter. Because that looks like that is not interested in doing anything either. Oh, finally did something. And there is supposedly a drive letter, so let's see where we get. That's more like it. Let's just copy this thing. Over to the uh, desktop of this machine. The Southbridge chip is also partially impaired on this machine. They're supposed to be able to do USB 2.0. Mine only does 1.1. That is a defect, due to a defect in the Southbridge chip. 
Right. Mold them back in. Maybe you should read the... Oh, Jesus, it's all... Let's cancel that for a bit. So, okay, that kind of answers our question. And that does bring us to another part of the video that I didn't anticipate. We got Vista Drivers, we got 98 Second Edition, we have 2000 XP, and so on. And Windows Millennium is separated from this, which I find very interesting, but... Alright, so we'll run the setup. And the Rosewell modem is a Codexent UCM92 Datafax USB modem. And it's installing the device drivers. I can move the camera up. I'll get done by the time I do that. And oh, there it is. Yep, sure enough. And I like how that goes. So, yeah. And just. There we go. So, our next step, we're going to disable the AC97 modem. And we're going to try a couple different services. We'll try to net zero first. Yeah, that's a theory. Oh, there we go. That's looking promising. Eventually our net zero toolbar should load on the top. At least one would think so anyway. Uh, something else is loading in the background. I thought I did all that modem setup, but maybe I... Oh, there we go. So, yep, that's fine. So let's actually... Oh, I think what happened is, is I tried to get on the... Use the Google Voice box with the built-in modem and had no success. So far, not so great. Do keep in mind this is uh, over VoIP, so results may not be the greatest, uh, or maybe even worse than normal dial-up, and there's our toolbar, so that's great. Internet Explorer should follow shortly after.
Internet Explorer has followed shortly after. Now try and take this off the tripod. We do have our weights on it, so it should be good. As you can see, we have two lights on it. If I can get the camera to focus. The first one turns on, or the one on the the upper solid light turns on any time that there's a phone being attempted to dial or the modem is in use. The other one is telling you when data is going across. And our Polycom ObiTalk box is blinking like it's supposed to when there is active activity going on it. I am going to, at this point, I am going to close out of Internet Explorer. We're going to use a real browser. But first, we will do a 30 second ping test, or 30 ish. It looks like the results are slightly more sporadic than what would be with a real serial modem. Uh, let's try to go to Google with Google Chrome. Today, we'll try Rosewell. I know you can't tell it right now, but it does say establishing... Oh, okay. Let's see if we're still connected in any way, shape, or form. It is connected. Our pig times... Are competing with a Google search right now so the really high times are expected well wow, that's doing its thing let's go to the control panel let's see we are connected at 28.8 kilobits. A real serial modem would probably do better just by a hair. And I thought for sure this search would come up with some kind of images, but maybe not so much here. Yeah, you know what? That's good enough for me. So, we're going to disconnect. We're going to try a dial-up service provided by DOSDude1, a very popular individual in the Mac community. Uh, let's create a new connection. 
Uh, using a dial up modem. Star zero one one five four zero one five two two six zero. Good enough for me. Let's see what we get. What? Yeah. Oh, you know what? It says it's disconnected. Let's try that again. Something is over right here. It's using the right modem. I don't know why it doesn't want us to connect. That one gives us connect, that one gives us connect, that one does not. Oh. Because it's actually trying to connect in the background, that's why. What? Let's re. Let's unplug everything and plug it back in. I may have done a freak accident thing here where Net Zero wasn't fully disconnected and I started connecting DOS Dude. And the modem's back in place. I'm just waiting for, there we go, Obi Talk is back in service, and we will connect away. The modem did turn on, and Obi Talk is dialing away. Wish we had some speaker noise to go with this. And this is also, the other end of this is also VoIP, so this may or may not work. I don't know yet. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's up with that, so I am not going to worry about that, but so, as you can tell, the Rosewell does exactly what it's supposed to do, at least on net zero. It'll probably do just about every, work on just about any actual ISP, AOL we've been trying to work with, and it's been a pill. I think there are some, I think they changed their subscription model recently, and and I think we're going to be out of luck on that one. But I do have one other thing to try. So with the magic of video editing, we're going to go try that thing now. All right. So now we have a Windows 7 laptop. And we got some small adjustments to make. And there we go. This machine does have a modem on it, but we're going to disable that. And now, as soon as I find where that may have gone off to, I am going to bring the actual modem into the mold here. What the hell did I do with that thing? Maybe. Oh, it's right behind the computer, duh. Here we go. I am going to leave the wireless connected for the time being.
Yeah, this one looks like it's going to go. Windows update may save the day here. You don't hear that too often these days. Hmm. Well, I'm going to second thought we're going to roll the dice here. And it looks like it did find something. So, I don't know if Windows Update caught it or if it detected on its own, but either way, Windows 7 does automatically detect the modem. I'm gonna try my luck with the DOS dude setup again. If that doesn't work, then we will try net zero. Let's get it quick. Dun, 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 that looks right. You dial up, and it's gonna be star zero one. There is a good reason behind the the star zero one, which I did explain in a different video. If this was a actual real phone line, a POTS line, you wouldn't need that star zero one. Eh, it almost worked. And I'll try that again. Is it... The data light did go on for a bit there. Starting to wonder if he's having some trouble on the other end there. It's either the modem or other connecting device on the remote computer is out of order. So I'm going to give up on that for now. I'm, I'm going to install Net Zero on here and we'll see how that reacts. All right. Net Zero is going to make me do the initial setup again, but oh well.
too bad that there isn't the satisfying modem sounds with this. And that worked so far so good. There's going to be one more initialization step here. It does say disconnecting. I'm not sure if I like that or not, but... I think we got booted. Yeah, we got booted. Oh, right, this is the initialization step. Alright, so we will go ahead and accept that, and we will try to connect. So far, so good. Now, yeah, hold on. I spoke too soon. And we are connected at 28.8 kilobits. If you have a POTS line, that, um, that mount may be a little bit higher. And somehow this video is over 33 minutes. We'll see if net zero loads in a timely manner. It's talking about there. Okay, cool. Uh, 
Not sure if this is a product of IE being IE at this point or, or what the deal is. Who knows, maybe with a real browser it'll work better. Let's try that. Yeah, I thought I'd press enter. Well, we'll just search for net zero instead. How about that? Because for whatever reason, this computer is just not happy. Let's see, we're 0 for 2 here. Yeah, sure. No. Oh, okay. It looks like some things are happening if you look in the lower left. It does switch between waiting and connecting and connected. Modem isn't doing a well now pick back up, but for a while there it wasn't doing a whole heck of a lot.
Making a sweet old time here. My goodness, 10 minutes to load. Net zero dot net. Oh, there we go. It's starting to get somewhere. So yeah, it took about 10 minutes to get this far. So at this point, I am going to disconnect from that zero before I waste any more of my bandwidth. Not that it really matters to me, as I do have real internet, but but there you have it. So the Rosewell modem supposedly is a hardware modem. Do I think it would ultimately replace the uh, U.S. robotics types, uh, the true serial types? I personally don't think so. I mean, if you got to do something with dial-up, it does work. Will you get your Windows 95 machine on dial-up? Not likely. And does, the Rosewell itself does have drivers for Windows 98 Second Edition and up. And as you can tell, I even got it to work on Windows 7 with little trouble. So overall, I guess for the price I paid for it. Let's see. I don't know if we got the disconnect notice, but. So yeah, I paid 10 bucks for this second hand. I don't know what they went for brand new, but worthwhile investment if you're just trying to do some casual work like I do. I imagine it would work even better with, say, real telephone service. And chances are if it gets if it gets this far, if chances are it would work great with fax machines too, which it even even does say right on the back that it is a fax modem in addition to being a data modem so if you want a cheap way to fax you can pair it up with one of these obi talk boxes and and you'd be off to the races but that's a few so i would give this a good review so i don't know how in the wide world this turned into a 45 minute video but it did but if you sat through all this, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments section. Thank you again for watching.